It's the Queen's takeover here for changing the game. All female ass kickers giving lumps to you lames. Carolina boss lady giving orders cause she run it like a freaking assassin. You won't even see it coming. Got the Texas sports queen repping Houston for days. She's the voice of freaking reason. Keep you stupid at bay. And lastly, it's the Jester Delaware is a home. Talking crap to Jolie, your brains might get blown. And you know Kat and Kayla both a rep in the South. So you ever disrespect, you might get smacked in the mouth. Three women, one vision, podcast with a mission. Leaving haters so pissed, they be stumbling and tripping. Trust me when I tell you, you don't want that smoke. All female trio will make you lose that hope. It's time, so turn it up, let's get ready to go. It's the Queen's Takeover, ladies, start that show. Well, before we get crack a lacking on this week's episode, we gave you a <laughs> shut up, y'all. All right. Well, we surprised her age is after. showing. <laughs> Damn, it's gonna be that kind of a week, huh? All right. Well, last we gave y'all a surprise with a new theme. We want to give a special shout out to Mr. Chaos from Chaos Theory Podcast for hooking us up. He did a killer job. All three of us were definitely blown away. Um, if you want to catch him and follow him online, go to, um, go to his Twitter page at, at chaos underscore theory pod. Thank you again, sir. And, uh, definitely do some more business with you in the future. All right. So, and plus Miss Kayla, the boss lady has been holding on to something for hours and won't, and refused to tell me and Jolie about it until we started recording. So we're recording floor is yours. All right, um, y'all, I went out of town this weekend for a wedding. One of my best friends was getting married. Well, yesterday in the elevator of the hotel, I happened to have my Queen's Takeover podcast shirt on in the elevator, and these two teenage girls were in there, and they were talking about it. And uh, I said, oh, you listen to it? And they said, yeah, we've never missed an episode. And so I just thought I would occasionally just, you know, edge into it and say, well, who's your favorite? Who do you like? And she, and they said, we love, we love the jester. And she says, we um, just love how the boss lady just comes out and, you know, out of nowhere speaks her mind, you know, and they, 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 they couldn't really choose who they liked the most. Okay. So she kept talking and I said, oh, cool. You know, so she got, get ready to get off the elevator. And I said, oh yeah, by the way, when you when we get famous, remember you rode the elevator with the Carolina boss lady, and the doors closed. So I don't know what her expression was, or she got excited. But I just wanted to put it out there: is people is noticing us more than we know. And I think if she had a chance, she'd probably beat that door. So I was basically checking the hallways, making sure she wasn't trying to track me down, see where I was at. But you know, it's the fact one of these days we're going to be famous. So. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> but you waited to the last damn minute. What? She was getting off the elevator. We're on four and she was on three. So it was just like, oh yeah, by the way, you were in the elevator with the Carolina boss lady. You know, it's just like. <laughs> so just a thing to say, hey, we got fans. We're getting noticed. And one of these days we're going to be in an elevator next time. We're going to be getting signed and autographs. So. And hey, take a selfie, even better. (laughs) Yeah, it's like these days, it's like the era of the selfies, right, Jelly? Mm -hmm. Yep. Selfies, joy. (laughs) She would would rather do the autographs. (laughs) I know, I just, I mean, I get pictures of celebrities all the time, so I don't mind it. But like, I think it's a little bit different when it's me. Like, I don't ever expect to be famous. I don't ever expect, I never, I'm not doing this for fame. I'm doing this because I love it. So if it happens, it happens. If somebody wants a selfie with me, yes, Casey, if we ever meet, yes, you get a selfie with me. I promise. <laughs> but, you know, that's just because that's the kind of guy you are. And, uh, but yeah, no, it's just, that's kind of cool. I mean, that's not the first time I've heard that like people prefer my style, which is funny considering you know, people don't like loud and brash people, yet here I am. Yeah, really. But we love you very much. Yep. Yeah, I love you too. 
<laughs> yeah, it's like the the show's mainly it's like you two and everything. So it's like whenever like so people are like saying like who they like the most, I'm like going, if anybody picks me, it's like I'll be shocked. Like I said, she couldn't, she didn't choose, you know, like she said, she did like, you know, the jester and then of course me, but then she's like, she's, and then she's like, then you got cat. She says, I just really can't choose. I love you all. So it's just like, cause she says it was just different moments that they had. Like her friend goes, yeah, it's just different moments. Like there's certain points in there, you know, you either, okay, cat on this one or Jolie on this one, or, you know, it was cool. All right. Well, well, whoever these two ladies are in Carolina, we love you and thank you for the support and everything. We hope to run into you in person. Maybe we'll see you in Dallas next year. All right. All right. Let's get cracking. We did have a few things to talk about here. All right. So Tuesday night on NXT, we had the banger, banger of a rematch between Karrion Cross and Finn Balor for the NXT championship. Even though they went to war and everything, Karrion Cross retained the title. Now, before and afterwards, it came out that Raw have been trying to get Finn for a while now, but the people in NXT love him and everything. So since so she's got food in her mouth, I'm going to go to Kayla. Kayla, which show really needs Finn the most? What show that really needs Finn the most? Um, I'm actually going to go with either Raw or SmackDown. Um, obviously, yes, it's cool to see him back at NXT. Um, but with their talent down there, um, Karrion Cross has it, has the NXT championship in his hands. He's doing good with it. So um, NXT does not need Mr. Balor anymore. Um, so I truthfully would either love him go up back to Raw or SmackDown, preferably SmackDown. I know he probably wouldn't dethrone our wonderful tribal chief, but um I would like to actually see him get that um, real opportunity as a universal championship again. Um, but as far as a uh, NXT, I don't think I don't think NXT needs him anymore. I mean, he can continue to build it, but I think he's done what he has done down there. So it's time for him to expand and branch back out to the main roster. Speaking of the Tribal Chief. If he continues on this little request of his to try to break up the Usos and stuff like that and cause like a little family friction, I'm actually going to drag some signs with me to to the Toyota Center when the SmackDown comes and everything. I never thought I'd be making signs again and everything because, hell, I'm 42 and stuff, and my nephew's 26 right now, but almost 26. But it's like, I'm going to make a couple of signs myself, like saying, you're breaking up one of the best tag teams ever now okay okay but first let's look at this one some of the best feuds have been brother versus brother whether it's blood brother or fake brother edge versus christian matt versus jeff taker versus kane the usos fighting themselves probably put on a banger of a match and they'll probably get all their fucking issues out and become that tag team again but again we also have history in the making next friday when you've got a father-son duo tag champs going against two legitimate blood brothers. So I'm going to enjoy the history. Roman can enjoy shaking his upper lip in anger. And I actually disagree with him going to SmackDown, Finn Balor. I believe Finn would be better on Raw because I, I see more classic matches with him and Riddle and Xavier Woods. Him versus Orton, him versus Bobby Lashley, Alexander. You know, there's so many more possibilities. And I think that right now the pieces on SmackDown are set, whereas the pieces on Raw are a lot more up in the air. And um, Kyle O'Reilly, please go against Karrion Cross. That is my pick for that triple threat match this week. All I know is it's Kyle O'Reilly versus um, Johnny Borgano and somebody else that I don't <laughs> fucking care about. And I would prefer... Kyle O'Reilly to do it because of the fact that he is such a te- technic- technical wrestler. Um, he'd be able to, it, even though I'm pretty sure Karrion would destroy uh, uh, Kyle. Oh, yeah. I just feel that the amount of uh, technical skills that Kyle has will push Karrion to his limit and hopefully push Kyle up to main Raw or SmackDown as well. And Kyle, I could see actually going to SmackDown because he would put on bangers of the matches with Seth Rollins, Cesaro, Shinsuke Nakamura, Corbin. And I will say this, you know, I'm not a big fan of 
King Corbin. I've never been a fan of King Corbin. I think that he's doing a great job as a heel. But his matches with Shinsuke have been so far off the wall awesome. I've enjoyed it. And is anybody else loving Rick Bouge? I mm-hmm. miss the violinist. This is a this is a new twist and everything with the guitar with Rick Boogs or with with this guy and everything, but it's like I miss the violinist. Okay, you missed the violinist, but this is going to segue perfectly into our next topic of discussion. Go look at some of Shinsuke's New Japan entrances. Okay, this is very very reminiscent of some of the things that he did in New Japan. And now, segue to our next topic, Kat. Oh, by the way, I, I do agree with you, Jolie. I think he'd be, but be- I think Finn, Finn would be better on Raw. So I'll, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> All right. So talks came out this, uh, reports came out this week that apparently Nick Khan with WWE has been in talks to, with New Japan for a du- partnership between WWE and New Japan. And this is getting the world, t- uh, this is getting everyone talking on Twitter. And even Mr. Drew McIntyre is doing a little possible trolling himself. Um, not in- just Drew. Oh, not just Drew. Ooh, okay. Because it's like, I know um, Drew's putting out little subtle uh, hints out there that he wants a kata and everything. But who else besides Drew? Cedric posted something. Ah, all right. He, he all right, post. Well, he post. Go ahead, I Jolly. I don't know who the who was in the picture with him because this was back when uh, Cedric was. Uh, I guess the. I don't know when it was, but it's him and somebody that does wrestle in New Japan, and he posted this the day on the 29th when all this shit was flying around. But I do want to address one thing. And this is going to be the only thing that I really say about this, because one, you know, it's actually very intriguing uh, seeing Okada follow Drew. It's very intriguing to see rumblings on both sides. And it is hilarious to see the AEW fanboy supreme himself, Tony Khan, throw the biggest hissy fit in all of hissy fits. I mean, I, I have seen some breakdowns on black friday like you know when you're going for that last tv or that last ipad or that last computer and you don't get it and you fucking thrip shit and throw that's exactly what he did like he he had his favorite toy broken in front of him and stomped he cried like a little bitch now whether or not this is just talk is besides the point the fact that it pissed off tony that much and the aew fanboys that much is is fucking hilarious and then you've got jericho posting something about oh i'm not done with new japan and uh, i still have plenty of things i want to do with new japan it's like they're trying to cover their asses and it's fucking hilarious to me that they're doing this and i just have a feeling that if this does happen we could have sheamus versus dean ambrose champion versus champion for the e they're both United States champions. Yeah, he still has the U.S. title. <laughs> so, you know, we could get that. Or, oh, who knows? Maybe the tribal chief, chief will uh, beat some fucking sense in the John Moxley, you know? Or maybe Seth Rollins and his right hand, gloved hand will knock. Like, I, I just, I love this, 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 the possibility of this shit happening. And like I said, I would, as a, as a WWE fan, I honestly feel that this would be an amazing honor for New Japan and WWE to work together. It would also, with 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 the likes of Kyrie helping bring stardom more over with us, um, with the U.S. I think it's just absolutely a brilliant idea. Whether or not it happens, but you know, it, it, I think it'd be just that beautiful segue for people like myself that don't stay up till four or five o'clock in the morning to watch New Japan or watches only clips, I just feel like this would be something that that's very entertaining. Like I'm looking forward to whatever happens, but the fact that it caused Tony Khan to have the biggest crybaby fest ever was a chef's kiss. So Nick Khan, thank you for that because that was fucking brilliant. 
exactly and uh, i saw that and I was, like two seconds into his clip and i was like oh you gotta be kidding me can you ever just stay in your lane shut up do you have to always comment on wwe business it's like you say there's no battle and everything you say there's no war but it's like you're always commenting try to put your two cents into shit so it's like uh bye but it's like i love the possibility yeah it's like you're definitely right about that the possibilities if they do hook up with new japan are going to be endless and plus new japan still has to crown a new title because uh that title just got vacated yeah, well, Osprey. So you yeah, know, he's just, yeah. I again, and with the possibility of, like, you know, uh, Mako. She's from like the Stardom New Japan. Mm-hmm. So there's so many connections there, and it's it's beautiful and it's great. But one thing that popped in my head when he started doing his rant. Okay, this is going to show my age. But does anybody there ever see Star Trek? There's a movie called Wrath of Khan. Yeah, I, and you you you've bit. got you've got Shatner screaming Khan, and that's all I saw. It's like, can somebody put a gif of Shatner's face on Tony Khan's body screaming Khan? Because that's like, yeah, you know, like I know the Khan. I was like, I, I felt like I needed to send him the t- Taylor Swift song. You need to calm down. <laughs> Kayla, go ahead and jump in here, girl. What you think about this WWE New Japan stuff? Um, honestly, legit thought, think it would be awesome. Um, like I said, um, there's so many different talents that you could possibly see. Um, one, I would be excited to, you know, see Jay White. Um, that'd be another interesting to be part of trying to go up against somebody in WWE. Yes, um, United States champion Sheamus versus Mox would be even better. Um, you know, just there's just so many different outcomes that you can, you know, have. And I think it honestly would bring more fire to both brands. So if it's legit, seriously doing it, do it. And like Jolie has said, and, you know, you both said, seeing Tony Khan shit his pants because they're in the process of it or whatever, talking about it is hilarious. So, and if they really sign the deal, Tony Khan, buddy, I love AEW, but it's not all about you for once. So let WWE get this one on up on me. And here's the, here's the, the kicker. Here's the giant ass fucking kicker in all of this. You have the elite, the ex bullet club. You got Toma Tonga, who is the bullet club. You bring Tonga to Adam Cole and Finn Balor and AJ Styles bullet club reformed. But I would honestly, and thinking about this, you know, Jay white and all them, Tonga versus Roman because they were throwing shit back and forth at each other a couple years ago and it was great. And honestly, like I like I y'all said, like I would love to see these other companies go, well, fuck. Because Nick Khan has a set of balls on him if he's able to get Vince to sign off on this. Like legit huge huevos. Like they must be basketball sized. Huevos. And and, and speaking of basketball, <clears throat> Triple H. Shawn Michaels. Um, once, one, once, once the series is over with the Sixers and the Mad uh, DC, the Wizards, that's who they are. Yes, the Wizards. That's how much I care about that city's teams. There's a bell that gets rung before every home game. And while you've been actually replying to Joel Embiid, y'all want to come to Philly? I mean, it is the home of ECW. Drew Gulak will tell you where to get the best... Uh, Cheese steaks and pow. Come on, ring that bell, boys. Yeah, I was going to ask you, it's like, how long do you think it's going to be before it's like you see Triple H and Shawn Michaels up in Philly after all the shit on Twitter and everything? Because it's like, yeah, I've been paying attention to all that. I mean, when it first happened and somebody actually did the video with DX music and they responded, I was just like, yes, a million times yes. Because when it comes to being... Uh, people that you know trust the process and that's what everybody's been saying about nxt trust the process sixers trust the process Mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's like one of those things like you know triple h knows what he's doing Shawn michaels knows what they're doing and like if they actually you know did this i think it would actually hype the city up even more because like i said philly is the home of ecw yeah sledge was telling us they're gonna have roh show in the 
original ECW arena where you could probably still smell the piss and blood from yesteryear. Like that side of the city is if you're not wearing Kevlar duck and cover, like that's how rough that neighborhood still is. Um, Cause I remember AEW had a show there a couple years ago. I think no, it was 29. Yeah. 2019. And they were like saying, yeah, we had to make sure some of the people had bulletproof vests because you know, <laughs> We kept hearing it in the distance. I'm like, oh, that's just normal. That's a Monday. Yeah. And then, of course, it's like at basketball games, you got fans dumping popcorn on Westbrook. <laughs> yeah. One fan. And then they, ha- and they have to bring up the whole fucking Santa thing again. Let me put Santa to bed. Yes, I know this is a wrestling show. But as an Eagles fan and as a Philadelphia sports fan, this is me putting Santa to rest. He was a drunk cunt, scaring little children. He got what he fucking deserved. That is it. That is the end of it. That was 70 odd years ago. Well, it really wasn't, but it feels like it was. <laughs> Let, let's, it- let's focus on the kids that were eating horse shit outside of the Vikings Eagles game. All right, let's focus on that. But, you know, if we're going to bring up people throwing popcorn, how about the jackass that spit on Trey in New York? Just saying. Popcorn isn't going to hurt you unless you're, you've are you got an open wound. Yeah, really. Uh, and that guy in New York who spit on Trey Young and everything, he actually spit over 50 cent. It's like, are you stupid? Yeah, like this dude had, like, that is some big ass balls. And for the record, that dude that threw the popcorn has been perma banned. He has his face has been scanned and is in every fucking system at Wells Fargo. Unless he gets a brand new fucking face like John Travolta and Nick Cage and face off, that son of a bitch ain't coming back in. And I heard there's rumblings that they're going to permaband him from Citizens and from Lincoln Financial Field. So, Ew. so he this dude lost his season tickets. He's not getting his money back from his season tickets. He's been banned, and he could be banned from all the sports complexes. So you know, justice served. Let's let's move on. And it's amazing how little popcorn. Uh, Makes you uh, have a spring in your step, huh, Westbrook? Mm-hmm. All right. So speaking of sle- speaking of sledge, okay. He mentioned on he mentioned last week that this past week that this p- following week um, his uh, third match with O'Shea Edwards is going to be coming out on YouTube. I did catch some of that match. Holy shit! Those guys went to war. It turns out it ended up being a no DQ match. Um, and it explained why he ended up having to have mouth surgery. I'm not going to spoil the ending in case you haven't seen it, but it's like they went to war. And I do, I said, I put this out on Twitter, but congratulations to Alex Kane, friend of the show. We had him on. He was fantastic. He has been officially signed to MLW. So congrats to him on that. And then also I want to give a shout out to our friend D rogue because he is putting he and along with a couple of his friends are putting on a show around what was it june 20th in california and everything and it's called full queer wrestling for rights and it's a charity event and um it's like so it's like i was like reading up a little bit about it and everything so i i'm so happy for him and Hopefully I can get these guys on before the 20th so they can help promote the show and everything. All righty. Okay, so let's talk women. This past week, Sasha, the lovely Sasha Banks, the boss, she said she had a vision of putting on an all-women's show. And of course, this caught the interest of Mickey James, who ex- expressed interest in doing a show them- herself and everything, but was turned down. And then it also caused caught the attention of Thunder Rosa, who's, of course, involved um, one of the owners of Mission Pro Wrestling here in Texas. So I put out the challenge to these two ladies. Let's build the ultimate women's show. Indies, pros, AEW, I- I- NXT, a- WWE, I- everything. let's get everybody involved with this and see what kind of a card we can come up with. So Kayla. I know I put it to you like less than 24 hours ago. My apologies, because I thought about this late and everything. Uh, who, who's your first match? It was actually kind of bouncing back and forth, um, you know, trying to put the perfect match. But um, I, since we are going to go in order, first one I have is 
I would think because I love both of these in the ring. They're two of my absolute favorites, and I would love to see them go one-on-one in the ring. My first one is Britt Baker versus the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler. Interesting. A little different styles. Oh, but they do have submissions and everything. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's what I think would make it interesting. You know, Shayna would give, you know, Britt Baker a challenge and Baszler would give Baker a challenge. So, all right. Jolly, what you think about that? Um, my first match would be Nyla Rose versus Nia Jax. <laughs> that is actually my second match. So, <laughs> I mean, they're two powerhouse women and, you know, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Nyla beat the shit out of Nia. Um, I do kind of want to see uh to 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 uh spin off of what kayla just said but i would prefer bailey the original role model versus <laughs> the knockoff role model of Britt baker Ah, <laughs> uh, okay so you brought up okay you brought up Shayna, kayla and everything i actually have one for her how about uh the queen of spades the s- submission magician against the submission sniper i think that's just- yeah, it's like um, the submission sniper, Jordan Blade, because she loves because she loves to break ankles and stuff. Yeah, I like that one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay, I'll uh, Maddie Rinkowski versus Dakota Kai. Ooh, ooh, and then then I would do Nyla Rose versus Raquel Gonzalez. Mm, interesting. I, I love that. Like. And again, I'm not the biggest AEW fan in the world. Everybody knows this, but I respect Nyla Rose because of what she has gone through in her life to get to where she's at. So I will always want to see what she's going to do. But I would kind of think be interested if you had Dakota in Raquel's corner and you had Vicky Guerrero in Nyla's corner. And just to see Dakota and Vicky go at it, it just (laughs) would be amazing, to be perfectly honest. Um, But I had an idea for an all women's hurt business oh so it would be led by jazz okay she would be the mvp of the group <laughs> then i would have jordan blade okay naomi Ooh. and big swole Ooh. <laughs> i love that because it's just like it, it brings in everything that we love about all the different promotions um and i just feel like all four like those women would just mesh well together and especially under the tutelage of a legend like jazz Mm -hmm. i think would be amazing for not only whatever organization housed all four of these women if that were ever to be possible right and you know it's like that's why i kind of wish that like this whole war bullshit was just that bullshit where there was this door where hey these people can work together hey these people can work together Let's just make wrestling wrestling and not give a fuck what promotion they work for. Exactly. It's like, geez. Now, I, I had trouble thinking of Casey. I love Casey. Yeah. And she likes hardcore. But I'm like trying to think, you know, who could she go against? And then it popped into my head. Casey versus Victoria. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Because they both have like a hardcore style being Kate you've got the crazy hardcore style of like mental crazy right of the character that Victoria had. And like, you know, Casey just loves to beat people up. Of course. So I just figured that would be a very interesting uh dynamic match. Um I do remember like her having some hardcore matches back in the day. Yeah. Um but Here's a match, and I know I'm talking a lot again. I'm sorry. That's okay. But Rio versus Asuka. Ooh. Ooh. And Sheeta versus EO. <laughs> uh, All right, Kayla, you can talk for a while. I'm going to stop. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was just thinking on some of these uh, hardcore matches. Um, you know, one, before I jump into another, uh, two others I had, I will uh, reflect on Casey um absolutely loved her like jolie said she loves hardcore and i was trying to debate who would be two good opponents for her so the two i ended up writing down either rhea ripley or mercedes mercedes martinez i think would be thunder rosa that would work too 
because of her because of her hardcore match with Britt Baker. That's true. That's true. But it's like, damn, either one of these ladies, it's like, oh, but it's like you have to pick one. Damn, it's like this Mm -hmm. is all over the place. (laughs) Um, And then, since I love both of these, um, I thought this one would be a good match. Trish, uh, oh, excuse me, I'm hiccuping now. Uh, Trish Adora versus Bianca Belair. Ooh. That, 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 I like that one. Oh, what was it? What was the girl's name that we had on not that long ago? Which one? The young girl, 19. Jasmine. Jasmine versus Sasha. There you go. Ooh. Another one I, I would like to see, either way, I said Charlotte Flair versus Chris Jatlander. I think I would like to see that one. I would actually like to see uh, Charlotte versus Anna J once she's healthy. Um, just because I, I just feel like they match a little bit more. I'm not too sure about Chris's style in ring. Um, but I know Anna J just, I think would definitely more mesh her style. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think of impact. All right. So Jordan Lynn Grace versus Jordan Grace. Yeah. Damn it. You always get that wrong. <laughs> I apologize. Um, yeah. Jordan Grace versus Ooh. Actually, you know what? Jordan Grace versus um Mercedes Martinez. Ooh. Power, power. Man, that'd be a good one. Okay, Kayla. Do you remember uh Rio Mizunami from AEW Japan? The from from the AEW women's tournament on the Japan side? Short hair came out with glasses and mm-hmm. like a coat and everything. Okay. Her and Asuka. Ooh. Their characters are so out there, so similar. And I and I believe if I remember correctly, they got similar um styles in the ring and everything. Um, I butcher her first name all the time. So I'm just gonna say her last name. Uh Sheeta. I have actually have Sheeta versus Eo. Oh, Hikata Shia, yeah. Yeah. I actually have her versus Eo Shirai, which I think that would be similar a little bit. Definitely, definitely. Just something light up the light up the ring. <laughs> definitely uh, what about some tag teams <sighs> tag teams Trisha Dora Jordan Blade versus Sasha and Bailey I like that I like that a lot Kayla I'm thinking <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought she froze but then I saw like whatever's behind her head is bobbing up and down oh okay <laughs> I don't know what that is I think it's a. I don't know what it is. Oh no, um, no, no. There, there's a. It looks like your. Uh, there's the window behind you. Like the NASCAR race is on. Yeah, that's what it is. Because TV's like right above me. Um, what you what you had said? What Casey Casey versus Sasha, right? No, I said um, Jasmine versus Sasha. Okay. Jasmine Miller, yeah. Honestly, I wouldn't mind. I know we have the whole Bailey and Sasha, but to be I think of tag teams, I wouldn't mind Jasmine and Sasha being a tag team. You know, even if it were like a one night thing, that would be actually a dream one. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> There's a lot of possible outcomes to strain our brains on right now. I know, right? <laughs> it's like if they ever were to get this kind of a show off the chain off the floor and get it going and everything, it's like the possibilities would be endless, totally endless. Okay, so I actually um I went back and found the actual uh promo thing for uh the thing the thing that D Rogue and the, his friends are putting it's um full queer wrestling for rights pride twenty twenty one it's uh June twentieth in Pacheco California and half the proceeds are going to be donated to Oaklash and I believe from what I read that is a pride festival in California and everything so. Yeah, so it's like I saw that and I was like going congrats D Rogue and everything and like I said hopefully we can get him on soon to promote that and stuff. <sighs> okay, so Jolie Jolie gave her prediction for the triple threat and everything. Kayla, who's your prediction for the triple threat on Tuesday with NXT? If you would have asked me this uh the day that it got made, I probably would have had somebody different. Um but truthfully, if I really, seriously, I think he's going to rise on top of all of them and get his chance. 
Um, unfortunately, he will not win, but um, he will definitely give Cross a run for his money. And um, another championship opportunity for him would be well will be well deserved. Um, anyway, I think Mr. Kyle O'Reilly is going to be the winner. Because I really do not want to see Dunn break across his fingers. I'm sorry. I, I I don't think it's going to be done because right now you've got that outside feud of Dunn and Bobby Fish. So that's why I feel like it's mainly going to come down to either Johnny or Kyle. Mm-hmm. And I believe that it's going to make it more interesting if it is Kyle over Johnny because I don't even think Johnny be able to survive carrying cross. Uh, seriously, I don't. But uh, does any you follow um, Bronson Reed on Instagram? Who? Bronson. Oh, Bronson. Oh, uh, on Instagram, no. Why? So on his story, um, he put a picture of him across the ring from Buddy Murphy for the uh, North American title. So I think he was kind of challenging Buddy Murphy. In which co- in Countryman Blood. In Countryman feud, what? Why are you going to go there so soon, Bronson? Is it, there must be a story behind that. I I don't know, but I'm for it. To be perfectly honest, and um, our deepest condolences go out to Alexa and Buddy yeah. over the loss of Larry Steve. He was a good piglet. Sorry, his life got cut short. And to all the assholes that were commenting during their donation feed, I hope you choke on a pork chop because they were just like people were assholes yeah that's yeah it, it made me sad seeing alexa and then when murphy posted the video i was like okay when i see murphy in tears i'm like oh man so yeah and i remember um when uh alexa and uh naya were on total divas and got larry at the time and everything so it's like seeing how i remember when it was like Larry was so little at the time and stuff, so it was just, it was. So yeah, I, de- I definitely our deepest condolences to them. <sighs> Ember had me cracking up because she's like, "When's he going to be dinner?" Okay, Ember, seriously, that's your girl. <laughs> she's from Texas. Come on, I know that. Are you going to tell me that you don't see a pig? You mm. put <laughs> pig roast, barbecue, mm. pulled pork. No. <laughs> But then apparently Larry Steve bullied her to give her food and chased her. So that was fucking hilarious. So ah, is that what it was. <coughs> so apparently, me. apparently he did the same thing to Ryan. Uh, that you know, like you know, chased him for food or something like that. And Alexa's like, you just have to tell him no, and he'll stop. <laughs> I mean, pets pets are amazing. Whether it's a hamster, a bird, a dog, a pig, a cat, a snake. Yeah. Fuck tarantulas, because fuck you. Uh, no <laughs> um scorpions no hermit crabs yeah all right well just give everybody a, a quick update on double or nothing um unfortunately mox and uh Eddie yes Kingston yes lost. yes a stupid young bucks retained yes i know i saw we know <laughs> oh the young cucks retained oh what a shame yeah uh, uh kayla you didn't need to go off on me like that I didn't look, know you were paying attention on Twitter, okay? Don't go off on me like that. Joel look, usually, I usually get enough from Jolie. I don't need it from you too, woman. Look, I'm sorry, she, Kat. She, I love you. She hates the young bucks, but I thought I hated them more. But that that's shocking that she just fucking went apeshit. That that's did you eat a Snickers? Are you hangry? <laughs> I just the, the young buck young bucks can just go something right now. I know, right? Sheesh. I mean, no offense. It's just Ever since they got this damn tag team titles, yes, I'm saying this, they've gotten cocky as hell. Like nobody can fucking beat them. Reminds me of Trey Young with the Hawks. And let me put it to you this way, and this is something that I said from day one, when you were going to have these five, four or five men at the top of the company, that once they get the titles, barely anybody else is going to get them. You got Omega with the championship, pissing on TNA's championship. You've got the Young Bucks, who don't even give the Revival a fucking tag match. They give Mox and King. That was bullshit. 
The next one in line should have been FTR. I don't know where they are on the ranking. I don't fucking care. They fucking beat the shit out of Jericho. They deserve to be up there. Like that, their whole rank is bullshit. That's another thing that bugs me. Oh, you're not rank. The, the fuck? Then how the fuck did Miro get a fucking championship match? He he he's he was never ranked. Yeah. And um, I'm sorry, Cody. Whoever did that Captain American drawing of you was while an amazing piece of art. No, no, dude. You are not fucking Captain America. That is John Cena. Go fuck yourself. And I hope a a a, a go go beats the shit out of you. Uh, Kayla, you want to address that? Excuse me. You want to you you want to address that with her? Yes, yes. I hope a go go beats the shit out of the cocky Cody Rhodes. You want to know why? Because the man is a lot better in ring than Cody Rhodes. Plus, he's got the accent <laughs> and doesn't act like a politician. And, you know, what was the famous thing that Cody always said about AEW is that they weren't going to have scripted anything, and yet his whole promo was fucking scripted. And he went to a focus group. <laughs> and he went to a focus group. What, what focus group? Young Republicans? Jesus fucking Christ. Or did you go to the old folks' home down the road? They probably thought that you were your daddy. Uh, Kayla, I thought you were going to go off on her. I gave you the floor and everything. Oh, well. <laughs> she, she's saving her strength for later. Ah. I was going to say that's her opinion. I mean, obviously, you know, would I like to see Cody win? Yeah. Um, but maybe for once he has somebody that has his numbers. So best of luck to both of them. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm great. <laughs> I'm like she says I'm saving it for later because I think I'm going to need it uh, okay alright well let's see I think I'm going to anybody got any final words because I think uh, let's see Kayla you got any final words I'm good well I got some final words as far as like a surprise for Jolie oh no let me, oh, let, right. me, let, me, let, me right. let me get my final words in Okay, you get your final words in. So June is Pride Month. And at the end of the month, we will be doing an entire show dedicated to the LGBTQ plus community within wrestling and hearing what D-Rogue is doing. I hope maybe we can get him in for that show or just to go whatever he has to, for whatever reason, because, you know, what, what they're doing. Um, but if you have a chance and you know somebody that is uh, gay youth questioning, check out the Trevor Project they are very willing to uh, educate and help the LGBTQ youth in America. Um, unfortunately, the suicide rate amongst trans kids is still too fucking high. And yeah, so please do what you can to try to help the kids that are struggling and don't judge them for who and what they are. Okay, Kat, what's your shit now? Oh, I like how she says that, Kayla. What's I'm scared. Shit? I'm Actually, scared. I will, I, Jolie, Jolie, I will say this. You will absolutely love it. Okay. So, Kat, take okay. it away. So, you did bring up Pride Month, and I thought about this, too, the other day. And so, I reached out to um, our buddy Mitch Norton with Norton Graphics, uh, who did help us out with some ads and everything. And I did have him come up with this killer design. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. And uh, I know this is uh, on audio and everything, but uh, Tuesday afternoon, about an hour after we dropped this episode, we are going to be launching a new set of merchandise on our personal web page, on our personal online store at at Spreadshot. (sighs) I always get the I always get the damn name wrong. I'll say, anyways, I'll I'll drop the link an hour after um, our, an hour after we drop this episode and everything. But um, it, it is a new set of merchandise with our logo in pride colors, and for the month of June, um, we will any proceeds that we get from that from the um, the sale of anything on this. And I I'm rambling and I apologize and everything. Any proceeds we get will be donated to charity. 
Julie, I just need a charity to donate it to. Trevor Project. Done. All proceeds go to the Trevor Project because I didn't have them growing up and kids nowadays do. So and especially with everything that's going on in this world and the amount of hate and everything. So any proceeds of the shirt will be sent directly to the Trevor Project at the end of the month. Thank yeah. you. And um, it's on our personal online store and everything. It's more than just shirts. So it's like you can get it on cups, hats. We do have stickers and everything. And so um, the design is very transparent. So it will work with any color that we that is available on the online store and everything. So uh, definitely check it, check it out on Tuesday. Like I said, it'll drop an hour after uh, we drop this episode. And, um, and I'll, and I'll, uh, just keep an eye out on our, uh, on our Twitter page for the sh- spreadshirt store link. And so, yeah, Jolie, that was, just, I've been holding yeah. that for, I've been holding that for a week. Uh, look, I've been trying to get, uh, uh, black mass to drop uh, pride gear too. So we'll see if I, if I, if my bugging them during their streams worked. Cause, All Cause black mass is awesome. They just came out with a new uh, collab shirt with Fang. Um, and it looked really cool. But by the time I saw it, my size was actually already sold out. I was like, son of a bitch. There's too <laughs> many big people that want this shirt. Right. And uh, ca- speaking of chaos, theory he also just dropped a pride version of his shirt as well and i know it's going to a uh charity um for uh military lgbtq plus um i forgot the name of the charity off the top of my head and i apologize for rambling a little little bit during this episode and everything but it's (sighs) been a long weekend guys uh it's memorial day weekend as well and uh, today was the Indy, today Sunday. So the Indy 500 was on. You've got the Coca Cola 600 in North Carolina. Uh, two big monster races that honor our fallen soldiers that give us the right to do what we do. And um, we want to thank every serviceman that has lost their life for our freedom. Um, so thank you to their families. Uh, and we we are very humbled and blessed to have this ability to bullshit and talk and ramble as much as we do on this show um i i have military in my family and i get scared every time he leaves so i understand the anxiousness of it luckily he is now home on the west coast from deployment so hopefully he'll be getting home to the east coast to see family so knock on wood for that um hmm. there was something else i wanted to say but i forgot Oh, yes. So we brought up Sasha, and I I just want to bring this up real quick. Don't get me wrong. I love Thunder Rosa. I respect everything she has done with Mission Pro. I respect Mickey James and everything that she has done. But acting like you're the first person to put on a women's only show or women's only production and kind of taking stabs at Sasha for wanting to put something on isn't beneficial to the actual product. I think that's one of the biggest downfalls that pro wrestling has today that we, they like to take digs and they like to attack. Yes, I'm guilty of it, but that's because I love making AEW fanboys bitch and scream. I think that's an absolute joy. I mean, I don't get a lot of joy in life, and when that happens, I absolutely love it. I mean, it's like watching Paul Heyman tear somebody apart because he's just that great with his words. <laughs> so I, I feel that attacking Sasha, who actually had her real name on her page, so it wasn't technically Sasha, it was Mercedes saying this. Mm-hmm. It kind of felt like, well, okay, yeah, you guys are doing it. She still wants to do something bigger and better. And I think snark and attack isn't the way of going about it. You know, you can be a little bit like, well, I did it first, but here's what you can do. Or let's collab. Right. Let, let's, let's make women's wrestling what it is meant to be. The highlight, the main event, because that's what it deserves. Because again, some of the best stories in wrestling right now, are the women's wrestlers. And I'm looking at the, the match tonight between Britt and Sheeta. That should be a fucking co-made event. Like that has been building and building and building. And your your main event is going to be what? Omega, Pac, and Orange Cassidy, who was probably exhausted from flying back from DC. I don't know. He was at the Sixers game a couple nights ago. I know that because they showed him in the on the Jumbotron. 
Yeah, yeah. I him, that. him and that other guy. So, so it's just like you know, the, the snark was not necessary. I get you trying to defend your product, and I absolutely love your product. But let's not fight. Let's work together. Like that. That's that is my biggest pet peeve right now with all of this. Like, just work the fuck together. How hard is that? So I'm going to end that there. And um, so happy Memorial Day. And uh, this drops on June 1st. So as the queer of the group, happy pride, ladies and gentlemen, let your kinks fly. (laughs) And yes, when I say kinks, I mean those big leather daddies that are wearing nothing but chaps. And if you don't want your kids to see them, do not bring them to any pride festival, sweetheart. This is (laughs) our time. We got to see you guys canoodling on the beach all the fucking time. Uh Uh-uh, this is our day, bitch. Mm -mm. (laughs) all right i'm gonna end this there before uh jolie goes off anymore and gets all crazy on this like more than usual (laughs) look it's pride honey i know i know i know (laughs) i know one of my best friends is in florida getting an early start (laughs) well i'm actually happy because i think philly pride is got actually postponed until september so there's a possibility that i might be able to go Oh, cool. All right. Well, that's all we have for this episode of The Queen's Takeover. Thank you so much for joining us. And tune in next time as The Takeover continues. Y'all have a good one.